just kind of got started. I, I'm one of those people that like to be like extra prepared. I, I feel like I need to be extra uh -oh. prepared. What is that? Jo um, Joel, where are you out of? Um, Tampa. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Uh, um, I've done, I've been doing insurance for the last like four years, home yeah. insurance. But by the way, you the boss, you the man. <laughs> I got to give it to you. you, you can, I, can, I, can I go find my wife and you tell her that? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Go get oh, her. Man. Uh, you guys ever feel that way? Like sometimes your spouse is like, yeah, what do you do all day? I'm like, she goes, you yeah. just like, you go on the internet, you talk, and then you, you flip a bunch of properties. I'm like, trust me, dude. It took me a long time to get to this point. So, um, and what, uh, what market you in? Um, I am kind of going like on the outside of Tampa. Um, okay. I also have my CDL, so I drive a lot up the East Coast. So I've been kind of collecting zip codes and looking at, you know, uh, outskirts of like major cities and stuff like outside of Nashville, outside okay. of Charlotte, stuff like that. Okay. Um, but I have like, I went and I, you know, I grabbed a uh, roar uh, for text messaging, stuff like that. Um, okay. My two biggest obstacles right now are just the the fact that i get a lot of replies back and people are just posting like outrageous outrageous numbers and also the they, they want like um um like funds verification i forget the, the proof the of funds yeah proof of funds yes okay um, so that's what's like the biggest thing that's yeah you know that's going on right now that I don't, I don't know how to overcome that stuff. I don't okay. know what to do. So what, what type of marketing medium are you using? Is it like text blast, cold calling? Yes, yeah, through Roar. Well, I missed you there. Which one was it? Through Roar. Okay. Um, is that texting or? I'm yeah, not familiar yeah. with. Okay. Text, yeah. I'm not the tech guy, dude. Trust me. I, <laughs> I'm the ugly face behind this whole thing. So. Um, with texting, you, you know, the art of it is you have to convert them from, from a text to a phone call. Like is you're converting and you're trying to have conversations with people. I'm going to give you a couple tips here. I, I'm going to do the best I can with the information I have. Number one, guys understand on price. I, some of the best deals I've ever done have started at the most ridiculous price. Listen, it's frustrating if someone says I want a million dollars and their house is only worth like 50 grand. It's like, yeah. you, you know, they're completely full of, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But you also have to keep in mind, you, you, you probably harvested a list. You either busted your butt to get it or you bought it. And they were on that list. Now they're on that list for a reason. Okay. Um, if it's a code violation, a tax delinquency, um, a water shut off or anything like that. Remember your lists are everything. So if you're completely struggling with your data, sometimes you got to pull back and look at your list. So we're going to talk about the list last though, because that's the most important. Number two, when they give you a price, I want you to kind of numb the price out. And a, a price over text is meaningless to me. It, it, there's no commitment. There's nothing. When they spit out a price, ignore it. No, oh, okay. Hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the property? You need to see if there's any type of motivation there. If there's no motivation, you don't even have to discuss price. You can just move on with your life. Like, okay. you are never going to get a good, if you don't have a motivation, you are basically going on MLS and competing without a realtor and paying the realtor fees and doing all that minutia for it. Okay. Price is irrelevant. If somebody needs to sell a house, a lot of people will test you right off the bat. And if you're like, oh, you're crazy, I would never pay that. It's hard to discuss when people start at like a million dollars. I get it. If you're too far apart, what's I like, how much work am I going to have to do? But here's my theory. If I can get someone within 15% of a target price, it's a no brainer for me. Like I don't even, so an instance, I get a lot of people, we do a lot of Port St. Lucie, you know, the going rate right now is like three thirty, three forty. Okay. So we target a neighborhood. We get, we do a, a big time on the code violations. They call me. I know they're off that list or they call one of my people and I tell them just disregard the price. You guys know I use a ridiculous postcard. Okay. I'm not telling you to do direct mail. No, I no. put on there a price on the postcard. So they are, I already give them a price and they call me, you know what I tell all my acquisitions, ignore the price. Who cares? It doesn't matter. 
they're just putting up a front. If they truly need to sell and they're motivated, if you can build a little rapport and get through the questions, if there's motivation, they're worth following up. If there's no motivation and they got a, a, a sky high price, just thank them for the day and move on. Like there's just, what am I going to do with you? Like I, you need a realtor. You don't need me. Okay. So do not let price freak you out in the beginning because I've done some, I'm, I'm working on one monster deal right now. We're $2 million off in price. And it looks like it's going to take some work, but it's a lot of lawyers and stuff, but they initially told me such a crazy price and I knew what they wanted to do. And I'm like, that price doesn't even make sense. You've got to sell it in the next 90 days. And I disregarded it. And after a while, he finally broke down. He goes, you know, I need to sell it. I know, you know, the property. Can we come up with a fair offer? And we came now on the higher end properties, a whole different system. They got to get appraisals and stuff like that on the lower end properties. The same thing. House is worth 300,000. I go, well, you know, I need 600,000. I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about the condition of the house? I'm going to walk through. What's your timeline? And if all those four questions point towards a motivated seller, I'm going to keep digging until I get the answers I need. If they don't, just move on with your time. Okay. The next one you talk about is the, the proof of funds. I get it. So you basically have two strategies. So if you're just starting out in this, number one, you should get a cash buyer's list. You do not need hundreds and hundreds. You just need four or five. Okay. Pre-vet them and get their proof of funds. Okay. okay. They go, well, well they're going to say, well, Joel, like you want a proof of funds, but I don't even know what you want to buy it for. I go, I just need to know that like you have liquid cash ready to go. Okay. If you're serious, they'll give it to you. People that do not want to give you a proof of funds are never, ever going to be a good cash buyer for you. And they're wasting your time. Okay. Okay. You can use that information to your advantage when you submit a contract. Like, honestly, you already tell them, hey, we work with multiple partners. That might be your partner. The other way you do it is reach out to hard money people. I'm not a big fan of this. I started out with hard money. There's a reason they call it hard money. It's hard. <laughs> but it's becoming easier and easier. Hard money people is they're not really underwriting your credit. They're more underwriting the property and then your experience level. Be honest with them. And just set it up in the background. You're going to pay for the first deal. They're going to charge you 8 to 10% plus 3 to 4 points. But if you could make 50 or 100 grand off of a deal and you had an ability to fund it, every now and then you have a unique situation where you have to get rid of the problem to get the paycheck. And I promise you, we just had a deal, $130,000 profit. I had to get rid of the tenant. The only way I could do it is buy the property, evict the tenant, and then put it on the market. It took us 61 days. Hundred. Hundred thousand plus, and I did um, soft money funding with that. Okay, the other way you do is soft money. Um, I tell everyone just avoid family. Like I, family is a big enough burden as is. You do not need to go to your family and start asking for money unless you have a unique relationship with them. Okay, soft money is people like are frustrated with investing in the market or doing this, and you simply explain to them. Basically, I and. By the way, when you first start out with soft money, I'm going to tell everyone, you need to overpay these people because they're taking a huge risk with you. Okay. What's overpaying? The typical person I start out with hard money, uh, soft money would be 10 to 12%. I, Remember, I okay, I yeah, I it's experience. like, and then honestly, I'm going to okay. give them a bonus on top of it. So I gave you three different methods for proof of funds. You've got to find one or two of those strategies that works. And when you get called to the table, pull in your holster and pull them out. Because if you don't, they're going to go, oh, I, Joel, you're not very serious anymore. In the old days, nobody ever questioned us wholesalers on proof of funds. It's so mainstream right now. It's the number one question probably being asked out there. Yeah, that's that's literally what I get. I like. So hey. Joel, worst case scenario, are you ready for this? You know what I did to overcome this? I had no experience. I had very little good coaching at the time. I had a lot of people take my money that had no idea what they're doing is, if you have decent credit and you have some sort of W-2, go to your bank and just get a, uh, a pre-approval letter. That's what I yeah. used for the first two years. Like uh, now I'm not going to use it, but like if, yeah. if a deal came up and I had to use it, I was going to make like a huge payoff. Why not? Right? No. Yeah. That means so they're just simple ideas. Like a lot of times we just overthink like what we do and you, you've got to find a marketing channel that you can stick to. And I tell you, you just got to be extremely consistent at it. The minute you stop and try to change strategies, it's okay to switch and pivot. But like the problem is the people who switch every month in this business, 
Yeah. They're usually doomed for failure. So texting, to be honest with you, probably one of the most amazing things I was ever introduced to you for wholesaling because it was so scalable and it was perfect for the one man or one woman army. Um, but as more and more people use it, more people, uh, they're getting used to it. Like I'm getting hammered by realtor associations. I'm getting hammered by insurance agents. Yeah. Oh, Everybody's okay. using it in their industry. So we're all getting numb to it. And that's the problem. So like right here, as we speak, I just got a text. I can tell by the digits on here. Let's see what it says here. Oh, never mind. That, that's a, uh, that's something else on there, but I, I constantly get them and I'm just saying like a little bit numb to it. So, um, so let's go back to the last one of your list. What, well, how are you accumulating your list for your prospects? Uh, I am using prop stream, uh, the list that I'm working on right now. Cause I, I kind of started dabbing into it a couple of months back, but again, I, I got like the analysis paralysis and I had a list. I, I just did like a high equity list. I didn't okay. really do it too much, um, and I the last couple of weeks I got back into it, and now I'm working on a list with it's just all vacant properties throughout the East Coast, just uh, okay. like thirty percent equity, forty percent equity, but just all vacant properties. Okay, um, so let me ask you, how long you been in Tampa for? You grew up there, or no? I've only been in Tampa for about two years. Okay, but you guys like like. I would say like August last year and I started okay. the uh, the course and then I got my, I was also working on my CDL. So I, was, I, I had to kind of like put something on hold. Um, so I'm trying to get back in it for the long haul. Okay. So you're familiar enough with Tampa. So um, I actually went to college over there. I spent way too much time there and mm -hmm. uh, I, I walked away with a little other than learn how to drink a lot back then, which is definitely not. <laughs> Yeah, Tampa is a don't do that. But I, I'm just it's just understanding. So you're at least admitting, go listen, Rick, I I analysis by paralysis. So so either that comes from the way you were raised with your family, you had very thorough parents, said you gotta think everything through, it's gotta be perfect. Very conservative. Or, yeah, or schooling kind of drove you there. Schooling alone will kill you on this one because you have to study, 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 study. And what's the reward? If I get an A or a B, I feel good. If I get a C or below. I kind of like, I didn't do well. And yeah. the latter part, that's not the reality of life. The reality of life is anybody you meet that's made it in life, meaning they're financially successful and they have, I like people with balance. People who make a ton of money that are terribly out of shape. They're a disaster and they're mean to people. They're not successful people to me. Okay. Yeah. We're all working on something, including you and me. So I try to like every one of them. I, and I, I've, I've been on the earth 52 years they have one thing in common. They just keep going forward no matter what the obstacle within reason. Like if you're, if you're juggling sharp knives and you keep chopping your fingers off, eventually you're not gonna have any fingers left and you've got to understand that's why we don't play with alligator snakes. I have ADHD. You, you already know that cause I'm all over the board with you, but I was told that was the reason I wasn't good at school. I was always doomed for like to be a line worker job type of guy. And I don't think you can do that because you won't pay attention long enough. Okay. I've been constantly programmed my entire life for that. Yeah. I've been, when I went through school, they didn't even know what ADHD, they just seemed you're just a hyper kid. What's your problem? Now yeah. they medicate you and everything. So I've learned it. It took me a long time. Well into my like late thirties to understand I have this, this is just how it's how my brain operates and I'm kind of hardwired for it. So I'm always thinking like two minutes ahead of them, I'm talking to you now and it can be a problem. It creates sometimes problems with my wife, to be brutally honest, because I'm always thinking ahead and I'm trying to protect her with my kids. It's like I see things they don't see, but to someone like you, they're like, why are you like all over the place? And I'm just like, I'm telling you, this is how I think and I operate and you got to get in someone's, in someone's head. So you have to get to the root problem of why you want to overanalyze stuff. And you have to dispel that theory in your head because I do me too. Highly I, conservative parents uh, study, uh, study, study, go to school, get a good job. I tried all that stuff. It was a 12 year experiment that failed miserably for me. So I tried it, but I looked at the data and said, no. So stop. Wholesaling has nothing to do with like being perfectly studied. My first deal took me 42 days to put together. I had no idea what I was doing. I almost, 
peed in my pants. I literally thought I was going to have a heart attack, but I got through it. And I wanted to just pull back and go, oh, like a lot of objections came up. I made my first $10,000. I showed my wife and she always supported me anyways, but the rest of my family's kind of like, what are you doing? This is crazy. And once you get rid of that, like paralysis part, like it's all up here, dude, you got to, but you have to do it. You have to go through a journey and everybody's watching this. If you're doing the exact same thing, sometimes you can, when we get a little bit older, we think back and go, okay, well, how the heck did I, why do I do this? this? I know it's bad, but I keep doing it. Yeah. Paralysis by analysis is a conservative. Let's stay safe. Let's get a good job. Let's not do anything type of deal. Listen, we're all going to die. Like I've never met anybody who didn't get out of it. So you might as well take a shot in life while you're here because you can always go back. I know you can always go back and do insurance, right? I worked in the corporate America for 12 years. I tried. I did everything. 80 hour a week. It sucked, dude. Like I can't believe how yeah. much I gave up in my life for it, but I didn't have the education of the tools. So wholesaling is frustrating in the beginning. It takes time. Everybody I've done these live, the people that have stuck to it, they eventually come out. I can't tell you if you're going to do it in 30 days or a year, but I'm telling you it's easily done within one year. My personal opinion, if you apply yourself and do it. So lose the paralysis. I'm not telling you to be reckless. Like that's not my motive. It's like, take the actions you need for marketing and have the conversations. And the more you have, the more you'll increase your odds of doing a deal. Yes. These people are frustrating. I experienced the exact same thing. Every one of you guys are thinking or doing. I have a business of wholesaling. Like I'm not numb to this either. I have to hear this on a daily basis. And what do I say? Let's just get through more conversations. Let's increase our list and let's find more people. We just had two people back out of a contract and I got to make a decision if I'm going to enforce it. Um, and one of them, I'm going to get in the car tomorrow and just go talk to them face to face. Go, okay, let's, let's try to iron this out. I have all the data. I know what's going on here. Can we work this out? I can't make people close. So you're just going to have to take a risk and kind of go out there. It, it's, it's just really uncomfortable and awkward. And I know you feel that way right now. Yeah. And, uh, you, and here's the thing is wholesaling is a very lonely sport. <laughs> like yeah. do you have any, anyone other than me to talk to about it? Occasionally go on a forum, but it's like, you never know who you're talking to. Like to talk to your family. They look at like, you're like, what the heck is he talking about? What do you yeah. mean? Why are you sitting in front of your computer for four hours? But I'm telling you the payoff, like I worked like a dog my first two years in the, really the first seven years in the business, I worked like a dog. And now I've created luxury, but like, even though I can pull back, I technically, I don't even have to work anymore. I actually enjoy this stuff. Like I enjoy the thrill of hunting a deal. So I love fishing. I love outdoors. And I equate to real estate. It's probably the closest thing I get to adventure and going out and hunting kind of like a, a it's like an instinct for most men. So I love sports. I love competition. It's just great, man. And here's the deal, Joel. The only person you're ever competing with is who? Me. That's it. And once you realize that, it's extremely powerful stuff. So the paralysis analysis is all in your head. Get rid of it. If you look at people, I just watched the guy. I'm not going to give a name because I love him to death, but it's a completely different business. He took a business in two years. He's doing $100 million a month. No experience. And I, I asked him point blank, how did you do it? He goes, I just did it. Like it was brutal. And I talked to Jeff Bezos, uh, Russell Brunson, all of them. Um, if you ever ever looked up the Russell Brunson story, I've, so I've spent a lot of time at Russell's events and, and learning how to connect with all you guys. Dude, that guy was down those last $10,000 and he was ready to give up on click funnels. And he just made one little shift and it says it saved the company. And, uh, it was, it was so stupid, but like you can Google the story and look it up. It just, everybody was on the brink that's made it, including me. I, at one point I looked, I go, man, the account was low. This is getting scary. Do I quit and go back to my job or do I continue doing this? And I stuck it out, man. I, I tell you from 09 and 10, those were two brutal years in this business. Cause I didn't, we didn't understand what to do as wholesalers. Cause it was such a unique market. Now I know exactly what to do when it comes up again, and I'm super excited about it. So um, I know these are general answers, but I'm yeah. just trying to tell you, you're not alone. It's out there all the time. Um, be careful the information you take off the internet because it's just someone's opinion most of the time. And you can have someone either validate or non-validate whatever you're thinking. And that's the problem with social media. Although I love it connecting with you all, 
but you don't know who's behind the screen for the most part. Um, so uh, like a lot of people say, Rick, direct mail doesn't work. Like, explain Every that to me. Part, well, I did I, a mailing. I did a mailing. And I think I, okay. You did one I, mailing and you're going to quit. Like, yeah, I think that everything works if if you put enough into it. I, like I said, I'm I'm from a very conservative Spanish family. Yeah. That you know, being an entrepreneur is just you know something crazy for them. So, it's so just, here's the deal: is change it. Like I've yeah. learned that, like we don't get to choose our family. No. <laughs> I, I you know God makes that choice for you, and like I just learned to love my family for who they are. And I, I filter the opinion. So you have to, my, yeah. my, by the way, my family constantly tells me how to do business. <laughs> I love them. So I can either lash out and go, that's great. Oh, thank you so much for that feedback. And in the old days I used to like, no, 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 no. And now I just go, okay, well, great. I, don't take advice from someone's shoes you don't want to be in. So, um, so if you ever did like, uh, if you wanted a trainer. Are you going to take like some big heavy set dude to tell you what to do? No. Are yeah. you going to take a broke? So if you're broke, but you're going to tell me how to run my business, why am I like, dude, fail, like, I, listen, we all love our family, but I'm going to tell you, our parents have also. such, your parents should have the most influence on you in life. Yes. But it took me until my mid thirties to understanding that I just need to love my parents. I don't need their approval for everything. And you'll have to accept that to a certain fact. Because it's once you get past that, like nothing can stop you. You can always go back to your old life, Joel. The fact you're taking a risk, you're just, and you can explain to your parents, I'm just trying to make things better. And remember, their job is to protect you. That's it. The parents' job, like the maternal instincts. Do you have kids, Joel? No. no. Okay. So when you have kids, you'll have this biological urge just to protect them at all costs. Like it's, it's so hardwired into you can't undo it. It takes a freak of nature for someone not to care for their children. Okay. Yeah. So that's your parents' job. So you love them for it. like, you just try to keep me alive. My wife tries to keep me alive every day. It's like, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't go way offshore. You shouldn't do this. I'm like, I love it. It makes me feel alive every day. And she gets it. It took a long time to have them figure it out. So, um, so I would, it's not tuning your family out, but, um, listen, I love my dad to death. He gave me horrible like relationship advice because here's what your kids do. So when you have kids, Joel, if you decide to have them, your kids will watch what you do. They'll hear what you say, but what you do supersedes whatever you say. And that's what I'm telling you. Your actions will speak louder than your words. So you just got to take like a massive amount of action. And here's the disclosure. It's not all going to be correct. Sometimes you're just wrong. So you're in the right path, dude. I'm just, I went Thank through you. everything you go through it. And I, it's like some days, like, I wonder why I'm in this business. I'm just beginning to full disclosure. Like sometimes I feel like there's easier things to do, but I actually love what I do. And that it's my 20 years of doing it. So we just wanted to do, to have something to do with real estate. And when I found wholesaling, so, so I'm going to end this with you. What's your why for doing this? I just want to give, uh, to be honest, I just want to give my family a, a, a better way of living. There you go. So you already know real estate's a proven path. Yeah. You have challenges because there's a lot of people. The beauty is I'm not taking any money from you. So you go, okay, Rick just gave me a gift. I'm going to run through it. Go to freewholesaling.com and just keep doing that. And just keep jumping back on these masterminds. I've had people like Jason's getting ready to come on. He comes on every week. I don't collect a dime from Jason. I just want him to succeed. The more people I can help, the better everybody thrives. And that's what I'm trying to get my point across here. So Jump on, jump on with Zach. I, I'm on every Thursday with Zach too. Zach's on every Tuesday, That's Wednesday, well. Thursday, and then I do Friday. So take advantage of it. Like the tools are there. I don't understand why more people don't jump on this live. They think there's a hook to it. There's not. No, I'm I, giving I, my time. I love it, dude. Like I love people like you. I know the struggle you went through. I've been in your shoes. I'm telling you, if you stick it out, you're going to thank me later. You're going to hunt me down. You're going to drive over to South Florida and go, okay. I got to find this Rick guy because I've had multiple That's people do it. Got, and I don't need everybody doing it. I'm just telling you, it's you, you're fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. Use the proof of funds method I taught you there. And then when your teller gives you price, you go, okay, Rick told me to ignore price, seek motivation. And that should help you in that direction. And just tune in every week and let's talk. And uh, I'm happy to help you out. Definitely. Thank you. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, Joel. Have a good one, bud. I'll see you. Okay.